Hello and welcome to the second part of the building physics tutorial. My name is Helge Simon, I'm head of software engineering of the Handbuilt Company and today we want to have a look at how to build a building out of different user-defined materials, how to digitize facade structures, wall and roof structures, then build buildings in different modes, 2.5D, or concept mode, or in 3D, which is also called the detailed design mode. And once we've finished building, we want to have a look at our model area in 3D. And then um, in the later episodes, we want to have a look at how to simulate them and then also how to analyze the different uh, material structures and the outcomes of having user-defined materials, uh, user-defined building facade structures. So let's start with opening the Animate Headquarter. And of course the database manager is the program we uh, need to open in a second in order to define user materials, define walls, etc. But first we need to have a project and um, I want to have a new project which I call Building Physics. And uh, the folder should have the same name and I want to use a project database. Um, so I say apply settings and a new folder will be created. So as you can see, um, if you're using a project database, all the um, new items I'm digitizing are then only available within this project. If I were not to click on this uh, checkbox here, then I would be able to still define new materials, new walls, etc. But they would then be stored in the user database. And this is a globally available user database for all the different projects. Well, since I only want to have the new materials in this project now, I said, okay, I want to have a project database. And I can say done. So now I can safely uh, open the database manager. And the first thing I should do is, or because I only have one project, uh, building physics is already selected. And database manager should be quite familiar to you. As you can see, there are is a number of tabs, all the different objects, elements that can be digitized. Apart from the three-dimensional trees are available here in order for you to have a look at them and also to edit the physical parameters, the names, etc. But since we're interested in building physics today, only the materials and walls are the ones that we are interested in now. So I can safely close all the other windows because we don't need them today. So first we have a look at the system elements in walls and the system materials in the materials tab. So as you can see we always have a, a folder called legacy. So in this folder we have um, all the different materials we used to have in old databases, so Animat is to a huge part down what's compatible. So um, that model areas that you were digitizing, I don't know, two years ago or some, something, are still uh, using the same um, physical parameters. I don't want to have a look at them uh, right away, or now at all. Um, so let's have a look at one wall, maybe um, the cement and concrete wall um, with the database ID 0100C1. Um, database ID is a so-called primary key in this database, so it needs to be unique. If you create a, in this case, project database item with the same database ID, this one would not be used anymore, so this one would not be overwritten, but I can create a user copy from it and you see that here we have a, a yellow um, exclamation mark, meaning that when I now digitize a building using this wall, we would have these physical parameters that I can change because it's in the project database and the uh, physical parameters in the system database I cannot change, they are read-only. Yeah? You can not change them because it's a system database, it's the one that Andromeda comes with. So, um, but let, let's have a look at this uh, concrete wall and um, it is quite unspectacular. If you double click on um, a wall, 
you will see that, like I said in the last video, our walls can consist uh, out of three different, up to three different materials. And the three different materials that we ha that we have here are um, all zero 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 C one. So this is basically a material. Uh, let's have a look. This material. And if I want to have a look at the physical parameters of this material, then I could. I, I can uh, have a look in the uh, materials database, so I uh, have to find it here. And then I see, okay, it's, it has a default thickness. This one is, of course, overwritten as soon as I build an actual wall out of this material. Then it has an absorption, it has a transmission and a reflection. These three, of course, have to add up to one. Yeah. So, um, of course, the concrete is not uh, transmissive, so maybe a glass, if you have a look at the glass here, you see that there's a, a quite a large transmission and um, of 90% and then 5% is absorption and 5% is reflection. But of course uh, concrete or other, other materials uh, are not transmissive so they um, have only components in the absorption and the reflection part. Then the emissivity of course very important for the uh, Stefan Boltzmann law. Um, natural materials tend to have a very high emissivity around 0.85 to 0 0.95. Um, of course, metals, they have a quite low um, emissivity, so if you have a look here, the emissivity is quite low. Then, as well, we have three other parameters that I want to have a closer look into, because um, these three parameters, they are very important, of course, for your building physics, of course, as well as the absorption, transmission, reflection, but these three are harder to come by these values, these physical parameters. Because often if you have some information about a building, you will only get the U value. And how to derive the specific heat capacity, the thermal conductivity and the density from having the U value, uh, I will show you now. So first, uh, let's talk about these three physical parameters. Thermal conductivity. Often it's referred to as the Greek letter lambda. It is a measure of a material's ability to conduct heat. So conduction, transfer of heat through a material. Its unit is watts per meters and kelvin. For example, metals typically have a high thermal conductivity. So if, for example, you are holding some kind of copper uh, wire and you would have a lighter on the other side, you would quickly need to drop the, the wire, the copper wire, because it conducts heat very well. The other um, example would be if you're having, I don't know, matches. So you can hold the match for quite a long time until almost the, the flame is reaching your hand and you will not feel um, uh, heat coming from the, from the match itself but from the flame. And so um, this is because wood doesn't conduct heat very well. So uh, the opposite is of course true for insulating materials like styrofoam etc. Styrofoam is of course material that where you do not want to have conducting heat because you're using it in insulation. So insulating material should not conduct heat very well, so should have a very low thermal conductivity. The next parameter I was talking about earlier as well is the U-value. So the U-value is a rate of transfer of heat through a matter, so more or less a thermal uh, transmittance of material or an assembly of materials. Its unit is very similar to the uh, thermal conductivity. Its unit is watts per uh, square meter in Kelvin. So um, this gives you an idea about how well insulated is a wall. So it would, should have a low thermal transmittance and a poorly uh, insulated wall should have a high thermal transmittance. So if you have these physical parameters, like I said, mostly you only have the U value uh, you would have to multiply it with the thickness of the layer. So if you're having, um, like we do, walls that consist out of three different materials, you would have the U-value of one material, then uh, multiply it by the thickness of the material, and you would get the thermal conductivity of the first material. And you would do this for all the different materials that the wall is built of and multiply them with the, um, or weigh them basically with the um, thickness of the thermal conductivity. So this way you can translate a new value to a thermal conductivity.
So let's have a look at the last physical parameter, which I want to talk about here in more in detail. It is the specific heat capacity, and often it's referred to as C. It gives you the amount of energy that must be applied to achieve a change in temperature of an object. So its unit is joules per kilogram and Kelvin. So how much energy is needed in order to heat a material by one Kelvin that weighs or that has the mass of one kilogram. And a high value indicates a slow heating up, um, but also a slower cooling down. So once the material is heated up, which takes a lot of energy, it also takes a long time to cool down. And of course you need additional material for this parameter, because as you can see in the denominator, it says a kilogram. So having the density, you will get the idea of how much weight does a material have. One way to uh, get an idea about uh, how big the U value is, is uh, the website ubakers.de. It's a German website, but it's, as you can see, it's in English, or mostly in English, yeah. And uh, you can, of course, uh, create an account and use all the different uh, materials in order to get some idea about U value, the physical parameters, etc. I, for now, want to use the demo version. And here you can have a look at concretes, for example, and you drag and drop your concrete here, and you would get physical parameters. So here you would have, like I said, the thermal conductivity, referred to as lambda. You would have, uh, for example, the density, which we also need in our calculations, uh, and you would also have the, the heat capacity, as well as the emissivity. And, of course, also the U-value, which is dynamically um, calculated when changing values up here. Yeah? So this is a very useful tool in order to uh, get some ideas about the different physical parameters, how, what are the values of the physical parameters that we also need in our simulation. So, but now I want to create my own material, my own walls, and for that I uh, want to uh, have a new material, and the easiest way to get a new material or to find a new material is to copy a material from the system database in our project database and then change the, the values. So let's have a look. Um, what can we use? We could also we could have a look at the default plaster. So I create a user copy of this item and then I would have the default plaster up here again. I can change its name. I can say, okay, this is my plaster. I can say, okay. Um, the thickness, like I said, will be um, is only a suggestion when you later build the wall. You can always change it. But here I can say, okay, my plaster, uh, as opposed to the default plaster, uh, has a different absorption. Maybe it has a uh, higher reflectance and thus a lower uh, absorption. So I say my has a 0 0.7 absorption, and the reflection and the absorption is 0 0.3 only. So like I said, these have to be uh, these have to add up to 1. So um, the name I already changed. Maybe I also want to change the database ID. This is of course always possible. My database plaster. Yeah. And since I changed the database ID uh, up here, uh, we do not lo uh, longer have the exclamation mark about, above the plaster of the system database because now we have different database IDs. Um, the specific capacity, I can um, adjust it as well. The specific heat capacity is the amount of energy you need to heat up or to change the, the temperature of a material of one kilogram by one Kelvin. So this is how much energy, how much joule is needed to heat this material that weighs one kilogram by one Kelvin. Yeah? So this is basically um, what the specific heat capacity says. And well, I wanted to need more energy, so let's say it's 1200 joules per kel Kelvin per kilogram. And of course the thermal conductivity, well, I put it a bit higher, so this means that the, the Heat, like I said before, flows faster through the material. And the density, I want to increase as well. So let's give it 2 tons per cubic meter. So 
I have this plaster now and I also have an insulation. Um, I copy it again to the user database, name it my database insulation. And here I say, okay, the thermal conductivity you can already see it's much, much lower. Yeah. It's only a tenth of the thermal conductivity of the plaster. And of course, this is why it is an insulating material, um, um, and the density is also very low. Yeah. While the specific heat capacity is quite high, so it takes a lot of energy to heat up this material. The, the absorption and the reflectance and the transmittance are not that important anymore because in the outside I want to have my plaster. So these four values they are responsible for the outside, yeah. Absorption, transmission, the reflect reflection and emissivity. And since the insulation is in the inside of the wall, no radiation is going inside the wall because we don't have a transmittance for the outer layer for the plaster. So these values do not change the, the calculation or the building physics as the insulation is only uh, in the middle of the, the wall, the middle material. I only change some minor stuff here. Um, let's, well, let's make it a bit more insulating. So let's make it 0 0.04 watts per meter in Kelvin. And I increase the density a bit. So this would be my new insulating material. And I also want to have, of course, the structural material, some kind of concrete. Oh no, let's maybe use a brick wall. Yeah, um, Brick is the structure uh, giving material of the wall, so this would be my DB brick. And um, I can change the specific heat capacity maybe again and lower it a bit so it's only 550 joule. Yeah. So, of course. If you are digitizing your buildings, you should of course uh, use exactly the values according to the information you have of the building. Yeah. So, and like I said, if you are digitizing the non-outer layers and the outer layer has no transmission, so then no radiation is coming through the wall. Thus, you do not need uh, detailed information about the absorption, transmission, reflection, emissivity of the inside materials but of course of the specific heat capacity, the thermal conductivity and the density. These three of, of course have a um, huge impact on how the heat is transmitted inside the building to the inside of the building and outside to the outside of the building. So we now have three different materials up here, um, but we do not have a wall that consists out of this material. For that we go into the walls and yeah, well, we already have a copy of a concrete wall. Well, I'm now using this item, it's easiest. So I say this is my new wall. And as you can see uh, in the wall, I also call it my new wall. Um, in the wall, you have other properties, of course. First, the thickness of the layers. We can adjust this uh, by double clicking on it. I will do it in a second. We can uh, restrict the, the usage of this, of this wall. We can say, okay, it can only be used as a wall or only be used as a roof or as both. So, this is the default setting. Its roughness length is when is the, the wind speed zero, uh, at what height above the surface. Uh, you can, here's a flag that you can decide, okay, can I green this element? Can I put greening materials on it? So maybe a plant growing up or with a new facade greening module or also a substrate, etc. You can also have a picture. You can upload a picture. So it would not have a color here, but it would have a picture. And then there we also have additional values that I don't want to get into detail now. So I double click on the wall and um, now I have the possibility to drag and drop um, the different materials onto that wall. And here you have our three uh, project database item. You see that also by this small um, icon in the bottom right. So my brick, this is the inside as it says here, should be on the inside. Then I have my insulating material 
and then I also have my plaster. And usually the brick is a lot bigger, so the brick is maybe 20 centimeters. And then our insulating material is only 0 0.5 centimeters, or maybe 0 0.7 centimeters. And uh, the plaster is not that thick either, it is um, maybe uh, 3 centimeters. Oh, it's 3, not 30. So, 3 centimeters. <laughs> Uh, so in total our wall is still 30 centimeters. Um, it doesn't have to be um, uh, 30 centimeters. I can also say um, this is 50 centimeters, the, um, the default brick. So uh, wall is now 60 centimeters in total. So uh, what I can also see is I didn't change the name. I forgot to change the name. I will do this in a second. So um, this checkbox will give the um, will change the color. I don't want the color to be changed. Would then be very white, very um, bright. Um, I don't want this right now, so the color stays the same, and I change the name here to my brick. Okay, so now I can uh, save the database. The database is now saved, and uh, when I now open Spaces. Uh, in order to digitize the model area, uh, I can choose this wall type and create buildings out of it. So let's do this. So we now start spaces. And with spaces, as you might know, we are able to digitize model areas. So it's now loading. And the building physics project is already selected. Right. When you select it again, the database is loaded again, of course. And first I want to have a look at where is my area located. I want to locate my area now to Berlin and to have the geolocation for it. Um, this would be fine. So I select this location. It updates the longitude and latitude, which of course is very important for a microclimate simulation as the sun and the, the time, etc., is adjusted according to the location on Earth. Then the model geometry can be adjusted. Uh, you say, how many X grids do I want to have? I just want to have a very quick running simulation, so maybe 40 by 40 and 30 Z grids. Um, the vertical gridding um, can be adjusted so that the lowest grid box is split into five subcells so that you have a higher resolution of the processes that are happening very close to the ground surface. Um, you can also have a telescoping, so for example if you're simulating in Dubai or I don't know Manhattan or something where you have really high, um, really tall buildings, you would want to have lower resolution depending on the height, so starting from a a height of, I don't know, maybe 80 meters, you want to have an increased size of your um, Z resolution, so maybe it's not 2 meters high at one, one of the grid cells, but maybe then 4, and then the next one is 8, etc. And you reach that by selecting the telescoping, and you would have a telescoping factor and a telescoping starting height. Of course, uh, you can rotate your model area, as I'm now just digitizing the radical model area, I, I do not need to rotate it. And this, of course, uh, you should always do when you have um, structures that do not align to the grid. So, for example, if your roads are, this is the grid, yeah, this is the grid, X and Y. And if you have roads, all the roads are going from um, north, west to southeast, then maybe you want to rotate your model um, so that they align again to the grid so you don't have that many steps in your model area. After having set the setting up the model geometry um, with also the horizontal and the vertical resolution of 2 meters, I click on create new model area and I will get a model area consisting out of 40x and 40y grids. Now let's have a look at buildings. So I want to digitize a building, I give it a height Let's say it is my first building is 10 meters high, and I am digitizing my building. Maybe I do it with 2 by 2 so it goes a bit faster. Whoop. 
And this is my first building. And then I have another building, 50 meter side. And it looks like ooh, it looks like this. So currently, we are working in the concept design. So in the concept design, which we also refer to as a 2.5D model, we cannot build buildings with multiple balconies above uh, each other and we cannot say okay if I have a look at the 3D buildings they cannot insert uh, windows we cannot set individual segments of the building with a different material and this is because we are not storing all the 3D information of every grid cell but we only save a 2D array basically this 2D matrix and in this matrix we say, okay, the highest grid cell is 10 meters. You know, the highest grid cell, of, uh, the, the highest column here uh, is 10 meters, 10 meters, 10 meters, 10 meters. And we have no information about the facades on these sides of the columns. We don't store them. If you want to store them, um, you can always get uh, convert your model to a detailed design, but then your vertical gridding is fixed. If that doesn't make sense to you, we also have a video online on our YouTube channel where the vertical gridding is uh, explained in detail and what consequences conversion to detailed design has. So um, what I of course can do is I can say okay this building doesn't start at ground surface but it might start at I don't know 5 meters height so I can undercut this building yeah um, this is no problem yeah what I then have is something like this and the way we do it is we store um, two matrices matrices now one matrix uh, holds the um, top value of the building and the second one holds the bottom value of the building and if I don't change it from zero it will always start at the ground surface so this is of course possible with the concept design um, when having two matrices okay but uh, let's have a look at the buildings and what different buildings does the spaces recognize. So a building for spaces is identified by its so-called building number. So if I have a look at the building number, you will see all these um, cell columns here. They have the building number 1, so they form one individual building. And all these um, cells here having the number 2 is an individual building as well. So I can um, select them and I can um, change some um, things for these buildings. So I have these tools and I can say, okay, I can apply a material, I can remove the entire building, I can set it a name. I can, of course, also apply a greening. And um, the uh, material I will apply is the, the one that is selected down here. So if I apply this material, I now have heat protection class for building one. I can have a look in 3D, oh, maybe I should deselect the building, yeah, and it's barely visible because the heat protection class is, um, yeah, it's transparent, yeah. Um, okay, if I want to change the, the, the wall and or the roof of a building, I again select it and I click on this uh, drop down box here and I navigate um, through the different materials. All of these come from the database and down here is my new wall yeah, you see that with the project database item is the one that we created and this would be the wall yeah apply material to the wall the red face of the of the cube gives you an indication okay the place where this wall should be um, put onto so the um, roof can be selected here also a drop down box and yeah, maybe I just use a dense cast uh, concrete here for the roof. And once I say, okay, apply material, the whole building will get this material. Again, I deselect it and you see, okay, the walls, all the different wall elements, facade elements, uh, do now have the um, our new material. And the top, the roof, uh, consists out of uh, the densely cast concrete. Let's have a look at how to set individual facade elements and, and change them. Like I said, uh, it's not possible to uh, change them in, when you are in the concept design, 
um, in order to do that you have to convert your model to a detailed design so when you click on the button um, you will get some kind of warning and this is that you are uh, only able to revert to the 2.5D to the concept design mode with a potential loss of data. This is of course true because if you for example digitize several windows in the facades, yeah, ex exchange them or uh, build uh, lots of balconies on top of each other and this cannot be stored in the, the 2.5D mode in the in the concept design mode then um, and you convert back to it uh, these information would be lost so this is the warning and like I said if you have um, some doubts about the conversion or the differences between detailed design mode and constant design mode please have a look at our YouTube channel where we have a video um, about this so I know I'm sure that I want to convert to a detailed design now and now if I go to the 3D um, view, I am able to click on set individual segment. Then the individual segment I want to set is maybe windows. So I put some um, glass windows inside my building. Oh, I was on select building here. So now I want to, I can, I'm able to digitize uh, some windows and you can do that by simply going above the uh, face of the cube and all the different faces of all the cubes are able to carry uh, individual information about their, um, their material and this is only possible in the detailed design mode. Um, where we do not just save a 2D matrix, but a 3D uh, matrix of all the different faces of every grid cell. So, um, we have a much higher information, of course. So, I put in some windows, yeah, and this nice building down here, maybe two. And here as well. And maybe I want to have a so down here is a store in this building, and I'm able to if I push, uh, if I press the the, the shift key on my um, keyboard um, while dragging along the the facade, um, multiple cells will be selected. Um, so now I have a basically a storefront maybe here. Okay. So now my buildings do have some windows, or maybe here. people living here also want to have a look outside. Up. Okay. So my buildings look more or less realistic right now, um, and I just quickly want to talk about uh, the building numbers again because they are also important for the calculation of the indoor temperature and of course for the air volume um, that is um, of the air volume, indoor air volume of the, of the buildings. So if I go to 2D again, I select the building again and maybe I now want to separate the, um, the part of the building where we have the, that doesn't start at the ground floor but at 5 meters height. I want to say, okay, this is a distinct air volume from this building part, and I can do that by um, saying, okay, mark cells, yeah. So I say mark cells, I mark these cells that should be separated from the rest of the building, and I say separate, yeah. So all the marked cells are now separated. Uh, and, and have a new building number, you can see that here, so this would be building number one, the di distinct air volume inside, uh, this is building number two, a distinct air volume for the, this whole building, and this is number three, a distinct air volume for the third building. So, um, the whole building inside, the whole um, um, indoor air volume is now um, not separated into, I don't know, um, maybe flats or something like that, um, but uh, this 
is a distinct air volume, this is a distinct air volume, and this is a, this is a distinct air volume. So if you want to have separations vertically as well, I recommend using um, our Rhino plugin. So in the Rhino plugin, we have the possibility to give distinct building numbers to individual cells. So you can say, okay, this cell here, the topmost uh, cell of this building, uh, is a distinct air volume, so maybe it's uh, some kind of room, and then you would get the indoor temperature uh, estimation for this indoor air volume separately. So for analysis like that, where you want to have very um, precise indoor air volumes, uh, I recommend using our Rhino plugin. Okay, so um, in the next step I want to make our model area a bit more realistic, and I want to show you um, that the outdoor environment hugely uh, interacts with the building physics. So for that I put, place some trees around our buildings, maybe some, some large trees here, or large tree here, uh, digitize it, yeah, you see that. So I, I place some trees here, in the model area, then I also digitize um, some some roads. Here's a road. And then we have a quite nice arrangement. I want to add one more building um, and this should be a, a glass house and one formed glass here. Yeah. So maybe a small glass house, uh, four meters high here. So okay so this is what my model area now looks like. We have a small greenhouse and the back, maybe a bit too many trees, so I will remove some of the trees here and place them a bit further, further apart. Okay, maybe like this. And um, in the next video I want to start a simulation, run a simulation with this model area for maybe 10 days and have a look at the building energy performance. I want to have a look at the differences in facade temperature depending on of course the different materials. I want to have a look at um, the influences of trees in the vicinity, maybe they because they of course cast a shade onto the buildings and of course change by this change the um, the facade temperature, which also translated differences in the indoor temperature, and I uh, want to have a look at maybe the um, evolution of indoor temperature in the three different buildings. So stay tuned for the next video. Um, thank you for your attention. Bye.